So let me outline some of the components of empathy, things that we need to learn to do to stay connected to people so we can really connect with that flow of energy that's coming through them. The most important part of empathy is the hardest. It involves our presence, our full presence to what is alive in this person at this moment. Martin Buber, the Israeli philosopher and psychotherapist, says that presence is the most powerful gift one person can give to another. A powerful gift and a precious gift. For when we give this gift to others, this gift of our presence, it is a major component of healing. It is a major component of the connection that's necessary for people to enjoy contributing to each other's well-being. But it's not an easy thing to do to give this presence to others because, as Buber also says, it requires bringing nothing from the past into the present. It requires seeing the present moment as a newborn infant that's never been before will never be again. So if we start to think about what the person is saying, we lose this presence. And so all of the theories that we might bring into the present moment about this person, because we might know them, that will get in the way of our staying empathically connected. Or if you have studied psychology as I did for many years at the university and were trained how to analyze people, what leads them to behave as they do, that kind of intellectual training and analysis of what goes on historically that creates present problems, that can get in the way of empathy. One of the things that we need to stay clear about then is not to get mixed up intellectual understanding with empathy. Intellectual understanding is the kind that I'm saying that I received at the university for intellectually understanding what are the kind of things historically that can contribute to people developing certain tensions, problems. And even if this is an accurate assumption that these kind of things are going on in the person, it means that I'm not connecting with this person as a unique person in this moment. I'm bringing in theories and ideas about them. So I am mixing up intellectual understanding with empathy. Another frequent misunderstanding of empathy is to confuse it with sympathy. For example, if a person starts to talk about some pain they're having in their life, the other person might say, Oh, I'm so sad that you're going through this suffering. Well, that sadness and caring on the part of this person, that could probably be well received if the person in pain first received empathy. But when we are giving a sympathetic response, we're talking about ourselves. This takes the focus away from what is alive in the other person. An image that I use to help keep empathy and sympathy separate is to think of a time when I've had a headache or a toothache and I have gotten involved in a really good book. So what happens? We don't feel the pain. We don't feel the pain because our full attention is in the book. So that full attention is what I'm calling empathy. And it's not to be confused then with after the empathy, we're certainly many times going to have a very sympathetic response. And I have found that people can enjoy that sympathetic response too once they have had the empathic connection that they need. But to confuse these two things can be very painful. A friend of mine helped me to see just how painful it can be when people mix up empathy and sympathy. She was dying of a very painful disease. And whenever I would come to her community, 
she would be likely to call me and say, Marshall, come on over and play with my pain. The first time I went over there after hearing her say, play with my pain, I asked her, what do you mean by play with your pain? And she said, Marshall, you know what's even worse than the pain itself that I'm experiencing is how other people can't deal with it when they see me in pain and instead of being able to just be with me to hear what is going on in me, they feel like they have to fix it or they feel like if they give me sympathy, I'll feel better. And they don't realize that all of the things that they suggest that I do, they're trying to give me help, I know, but I've done those things and it's not going to help my problem. And they don't know how to just be present and give me the understanding that would be so precious at that time. And it's so hard to tell them, Marshall, because I know they mean well. So how do you tell somebody that when you tell me, oh, how sad you are, and you start to give me advice, I know you mean well, but it's not only not what I need, it actually stimulates more pain. It leaves me more feeling lonely with that pain. So we don't want to mix up empathy and sympathy. Another thing we don't want to mix up is giving advice with empathy. Very often we think that we are showing understanding of people when we jump right in and start to give them advice. Another thing that's not empathy, as I'll be defining it in this session, are the words, I understand. I understand exactly how you feel. Too many people have had people say, I understand, and what the person was understanding was not at all what was alive in the speaker. It was just what their intellectual understanding of the situation was. So in nonviolent communication, as we'll see, we never say, I understand. We do something far more powerful. We demonstrate understanding. 